I talked to a demo and said, hey, you know, is that room still open? He said, yep. And I said, all right, I'll see you there in a couple weeks. And that was that. So uh, I would say the people uh, and the, the sense of community and the support and the, the communication and, and all of it is just, that's paramount. Great, 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 great people in New Hampshire. So, okay. Um, now, where, you know, a lot of people move into a new place, uh, you know, with, with ex you know, some expectations, what surprised you the most once you got here? So I think this is the established direction. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Established yeah. legal precedents. Okay. Followers, sheep, follow my lead. Um, we just assume that you're... Can you repeat the question now that I completely distracted okay. myself? <laughs> okay, okay. I'll rephrase. See, that's why I didn't go first. <laughs> Our, Good move. Uh, was there anything that surprised you once you got here? Yeah, and we've talked about this a, a lot with people we've met up here. And, you know, I, I've lived in states and towns for 10 years. Um, that seems to be like my statute of limitations anywhere I live. After that, I feel I'm no longer welcome and I have to move on. But when we first moved to Keene, you know, you come up here a couple times, you met, you know, you meet the uh, KAC folks, you meet the LRN team and stuff like that, and, uh, and then you make the move. When we moved into our house, which is just north of town here, we have the largest U-Haul truck pulling the largest U-Haul trailer. We went from a three, uh, four bedroom, three bath house into a one and a half bath, one, two bedroom house. We had a ton of stuff. Uh, 40 people showed up to help us move in. It was insane. So what my biggest surprise was how tight the community is. And it's not just, you know, the half dozen people you might see on the porch at the CAC. It's this network of people in and around, you know, specifically in and around Keene. I'm, I'm speaking around that, and I'm sure it's the same way in Manchester. I feel that I've met more people, and I have more close friends than I have anywhere else I've ever lived. Part of it is we all have things in common. We're all passionate about liberty, um, and we, we are all driven towards that. But the level of community, I think, is the thing that amazed me the most. So can I see by a raise of hands, um, who here uh, does not live in New Hampshire and has not signed a statement of intent? Define love. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was, that's my point. That's my point because if you're staying at the hotel tonight, you're actually living in New Hampshire. So you might as well sign the intent because you've already qualified the, the necessities of the intent. So anybody that's staying here, you should totally sign it. But um, back to the question, I think the activism is what surprised me. I know it was, I mean, I expected it from what I saw, but to see it happening is what it surprised me. Um, there's a quote I like, uh, there are a thousand hacking at the branches of evil to the one who's striking the root. And I do believe the activists in, in Keene are striking at the root of important issues of freedom. Uh, you may not like how uh, they're getting people to talk about the issues, but people are talking about them, including you know, the like of the front page time or the New York Times front page and things like that, so. What surprised me since I moved to Manchester is the recognition of things that are basic to us by the average person. For instance, cop block. When we go out in Manchester and do the checkpoint activism where we block the checkpoints, people come up and high five us and hand us dollar bills and say, thank you, cop block. And I didn't even say I was, they just know that the people with the cameras and the signs are cop block. Already, I don't have to explain anything. It's awesome. And um, Bitcoin, uh, last night, uh, this was last night, we were in the Red Arrow Diner, me and Joel, yeah. and I, I do this stupid little activism. And on the back of but every really scene, I'd like to say, yeah. and hit him up for his Yelp activism after the talk. Oh, the Yelp activism is great, but we'll talk about that later. On the back of every receipt I ever get in a restaurant, I write, please accept Bitcoin, and then a website like weusecoins.com or coinbase.com slash merchants, right? And so I wrote that, and the Red Arrow waitress comes over, and she says, oh, Bitcoin, I saw that on the TV the other day, I know you guys are talking about it a lot, it's getting big. 
and she was really excited about it. So that's fantastic. Well, probably what surprised me the most is just how bootstrapping it and what Randy seems to be, and I got I got to work back from there. Uh, so I spent a couple of years working in DC in the Libertarian Machine, again hacking at the branches. And there's probably close to as many Libertarians in the DC metro area as there are in the Free State Project. There's a, I mean, there's a lot of concentrated effort, except they all have careers out of it. They all get to do it full time. They all got a lot of money behind it, a lot of organization, a lot of professional talent, things like that. And where has it gotten them? And so. By the impact of everyone here in New Hampshire, I, I kind of, in some way, expected a more well-oiled machine. And I come here and it's anything but, which is a, I mean, it's, it might be a left-hand compliment, but it's definitely a compliment because anything is possible here. You can, you don't have to fight this massive morass of, of competitive interest. You don't have to, you don't have to have a well-oiled, well-funded machine to get anything done, you just have to get up and do it, and you can have an impact. I mean, you just, from all the years of slaving away and trying to fight for liberty elsewhere, and then I show up here and I just start doing stuff, and I've been in the paper several times, just like, it's so easy, you just go and start doing things. And so now, I'm, I, that makes me excited, just seeing how underdeveloped the whole uh, sort of professionalism of the place has been, because it shows me, what if we actually get some money, what if we actually get more organization, what if we, what, what happens when we really polish up the machine here, what can we accomplish for liberty, and it's just, I mean, it keeps me up at night just thinking about all these possibilities of where we can go in the future. Just uh, speaking on that point about getting the, the finances behind it, if I could, uh, I'd like to uh, thank the sponsors of this event, um, thank you Porcupine, Porcupine Real Estate, uh, free Press Publications, Free Keen, the Shire Society for making the event possible. Let's give them a round of applause to thank them. Because the, the economic side um, is very important. Um, you can't do this without the economic side. And uh, active, let's try to have a definition of activism for this panel. And there's one I looked up. We don't have to take it you know, as, uh, as a commandment. But activism is defined as efforts to promote, impede, or direct social, political, economic, or environmental change. And that's totally what we're doing here. Um, I'd also like to take a moment to thank everyone for attending today. Uh, you, I think that you being here is a form of activism, and you're promoting the goals of the convention by focusing on the activism and the activists of the Shire. Uh, whether uh, you know this or not, moving here is activism, and I've done it. Uh, moving here does all the things. You're changing the social, as you mentioned, writing notes on uh, receipts about Bitcoin, you're changing the political and you're changing the economic conditions of the Shire when you move here. So. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, since I ha lived in two communities in uh, New Hampshire, I will say, you know, I'll tell you guys what surprised me about both. Uh, the first one, uh, when I lived in Tamworth with, like I said, Kate, and a demo and pee and them. I uh, I was surprised by how the the open the motivation, the honesty, the open communication. I think I just said that. Um, and uh, and basically just how welcomed I was immediately into their home uh, without any of them having ever met me. Uh, you know, there were some really tough situations that we went through, uh, but the, you know, the communication and the openness and the support and the, the willingness to see the other's point of view, it was just astounding to me. I, I couldn't, I mean, there were times when I was just amazed because, you know, I, I've come from, came from Philly where people are like, screw you, who cares? <laughs> no, I mean, there are some really great, I mean, you know, really, really amazing activists in Philly and those are not who I'm speaking about, you know, with, you know, you have Jim Babb and Mike Salvi and all of them who are amazing, but uh, it, in, uh, in New Hampshire, it's, it's almost everyone. Now, in Keene, what surprised me 
uh, was the, I don't know how to explain it, I guess the uh, spontaneous organization uh, and support uh, and communication, the, the, the two-way radios, the, you know, when something's going down, you know, uh, immediately, everyone has their two-way radio on. So whoever's the closest to, uh, you know, a dis you know, a serious situation will react to that and then go. You know, not everyone can go all the time, but everyone's willing to do it when they're available and, and when they can. Uh, at, for an example, there was uh, a man being uh, tased <laughs> at McDonald's and I heard from upstairs, you know, and it was kind of broken up so it was hitting the repeater on the two-way, but something, something tased, something, something this, something, something McDonald's. And I just ran and, 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 and thought, oh gosh, I am in my pajamas and oh my gosh, and I kind of just threw a sweatshirt on and, and, and answered and uh, within, it, it turned out it, it was Derek J. Freeman who was there, witnessed it, was filming from his car, wanted backup, and I was there in six minutes and we recorded it and, 